Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. Many of you have seen the pictures I've posted out on the interweb or out on the internet of this Smith & Wesson Model 65. This Smith & Wesson Model 65 is a 357 Magnum. What happens to be so special about this one? As you can see, square butt, bobbed hammer, and the barrel has also been shortened. But neither here nor there, we're not out here on the range to talk. We're out here on the range to have some fun and put some rounds down range. As you can see, I am in front of the steel bay. We're gonna take some 38 Special and 357 Magnum to put down range on the steel target. And then we will test for accuracy. I will be back on the bench for dayatherange.com to show you a close up of this Smith & Wesson Model 65 that just returned from my gunsmith. Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. I have some Black Hills factory ammunition, 158 grain lead bullet that we're going to be using for the accuracy test on the range today in the custom Smith & Wesson Model 65 that I just got back from my gunsmith. We're going to shoot from about 15 yards off of my range bag for the accuracy test. Woo! Mr. Revolver Guy, dayatherange.com. As you saw that group when shooting this custom Smith & Wesson model 65 with 38 special Black Hills ammo from approximately 15 yards away across my range bag, you previously saw the groups. Lewis, my friend, you've outdone yourself. Great revolver, great fighting revolver. Now we're gonna head back to the bench to give you a detailed review of the work that Lewis has done on the Smith & Wesson Model 65. Dayatherange.com. Mr. Revolver Guy here, dayatherange.com. Back for our bench review of the custom Smith & Wesson Model 65-2 by Lewis Throne of Throne Arms. As you can see, this is a K-frame Smith & Wesson Model 65-2. It is a six-shot revolver with recessed cylinder and pin barrel. Right before this video, you saw the picture of how it originally started. It was really a rough revolver. I took a little flitz and polished it up to get a lot of the scratches out, but I just wasn't happy with the heavy feel or the heavy front forward feel of the revolver. It did shoot somewhat decent, but I noticed with the four inch revolver, it seemed to shoot low and left no matter what I did or what ammo I used. Not being happy 
and having not spent all that much on the revolver, I decided to send it to Throne Arms. I emailed him and told him exactly what I was looking for. A three inch 357 Magnum that was a fighting pistol. So we'd started to exchange emails and this design came forward. I asked him for a slab barrel, as you can see there, a notch sight. This is actually a Ken sight, which I will include in the description below. But this is a Ken sight, night sight, meant for a 1911. And as you can see, also I bobbed the hammer. Now, Lewis did some great work, as you can see by the group that was just shot out on the range. I've posted some pictures out on the internet already. I just couldn't help myself. I was so ecstatic about getting the revolver back in short order and doing business with Mr. Throne was a pleasure. The communication was spectacular going back and forth on exactly what was going on with the revolver and when he would be finished. Now, after posting those pictures, some stated, well, why not go full bore for a round butt? I decided to stick with the square butt. It just fits my hand better. I like the feel of the square butt more so than the round butt. But as you can see here, we're just gonna see if we can get it to focus. That's what the front sight looks like. Again, that is a Ken sight, front sight, night sight, meant for 1911, and Mr. Throne notched it for me. It's in there really tight. And then also, he cut and recrowned the barrel. Spectacular work. This cut and recrown seemed to have done the job and, and was the trick to my accuracy problem that I was having with the four inch barrel. This crown on the front here is the smoothest of any revolver I've felt. Spectacular work by Mr. Throne. I hope this thing focuses for you all. Some asked where the rear sight was there is no rear sight other than notched in the frame in and of itself for the model 65. And as you can see there also, he bobbed the hammer for me. This is not a true double action only hammer. He did exactly what I asked. I'm sure he could have made it double action only, but I can still, if need be, cock and shoot single action but I won't be doing much of that he also did some action work the action work on this revolver is awesome it started out at 12 pounds now it is at a crisp eight pounds he got the double action trigger pull down to eight pounds and the timing of this revolver is spectacular. Most of the criticism I've received after posting on the net was about, again, the square butt. Again, I like it for the feel and also the slab sided barrel and not having the indication marks on the barrel. Again, Mr. Throne stated he could have put the indicator Smith & Wesson on one side, 357 Magnum on the other. If my heart so desired, I decided against it. I wanted a clean look. Again, a clean fighting pistol. But what we did do is put 357 Magnum here. Don't know if that's going to focus, if you can see that or not but 357 on the bottom of the barrel there. No chance of screwing it up. Lewis, 
I have to say, you've really outdone yourself. You exceeded my expectation. I appreciated the communication throughout. I, I appreciated the quick shipping. I appreciated the quick work. You have just outdone yourself. For those looking for pistol work, guaranteed pistol work, you can see the business card there. Contact Lewis P. Throne of Throne Arms. I am not affiliated or associated with this organization at all. I'm just so ecstatic about the outcome of the Smith & Wesson Model 65-2 that I am completely honored to advertise for him on my YouTube channel. Great work, Lewis. And again, thank you. Mr. Revolver Guy, dayatherange.com.